All right, so now let's set up the details to our quiz. The very first thing you'll see is that there are a couple of tabs at the top that are marked in blue. Um, for most people using this, you'll probably only have the two tabs over here to the left, one that says details and another one that says questions. So the tab that's all the way over to the left that says details, these are basically just um, organizational details about the quiz. So like, you know, what is the name of this quiz? So this is my example quiz, you know, for ME teaching resources. And then down below, if you want a more extensive um, set of instructions, so there's a they provide this box that I often leave blank um, that is a set of quiz instructions. Um, and you'll see that there's some editing tools above that'll help you edit this just like it was a, a Microsoft Word document um, type. Typically, so, so we're gonna ask the question separately. So if, if it's very obvious what the students are supposed to do, like if it's a multiple choice quiz, the students typically don't need any instructions about how to fill out a multiple choice quiz. Um, but if you have something fancy that you're, you wanna, some special instructions at the beginning of the quiz that you wanna give them, um, you can give that now um, up in this quiz instructions box. Um, as you scroll down, there'll be more options, and these are more critical. So there's there's different types of quizzes in Canvas. Most of the time, what you're pro if you're if you're listening to this, probably what you want is a graded quiz. So this is a quiz that has some points associated with it that will go into your gradebook after the student is done um, taking the quiz. Um, and so, like basically, the grade they get depends on whether they get the answers right or wrong. Um, you can also give practice quizzes that have points associated with them, but that are not linked to your gradebook. So these are things like if you're trying to give feedback to students, um, but you don't necessarily care um, about having it be a graded experience for them, you can create a practice quiz, which can have exactly the same kind of questions. Um, you can also create a graded survey. So I think there's a more limited set of questions you can ask in a survey. Um, but basically, in a survey situation, the student gets points based on whether they answer, not necessarily based on whether they answer correctly. Um, and similarly, um, you can have that graded or ungraded. So it can be linked to your gradebook or not. Um, so for the purposes here, I'm going to create a graded quiz. I assume that's what most people want um, right now. <laughs> Sorry, you may have heard my kids walk into my room. I'm recording from home right now. Um, so that should be fixed. Okay, so I, so I have it set up to create a graded quiz in my gradebook right now. And then the next thing you'll want to think about is if you're using assignment groups, it, like if, if, if your gradebook um, and assignments are broken up into different types of groups, you want to select what type of what group you want it to be in. Um, if you are not using that option, I believe that there will probably only be one um, one category in Canvas that'll just be called imported assignments or something like that. Um, so, you know, basically you have to assign it to some sort of assignment group. So in my MEG, um, in my intermediate heat transfer class, you can see that I have all these different types of assignment groups. Um, so including those learning checks, but I also have different types of in-class activities that are graded and out-of-class graded assignments and projects and stuff. So you just want to make sure it's going to the right place. So like in this case, I would typically assign this to my pre-class activities or learning checks. Um, and then you'll see a bunch of options beneath that. So like you'll see that, uh, like, so for example, like if we create multiple choice questions, you may want to shuffle the answers around so that uh, I, I don't, typically do this, but like if you're worried about, you know, just students telling um, other students what the answers are and maybe like in order or something, perhaps shuffling the answers helps. Um, I don't really find that that's necessary. And often I design the order of the questions or the answers to a multiple choice question to be in a strategic order so that the students has to think something through. So think about whether you want that. Um, think about whether you want a time limit. So you can set a time limit for the quiz. Um, so if you're trying to use this as a replacement exam, putting a time limit on the quiz is probably a good idea to make sure that students don't have sufficient amount of time to share the answers. Um, a really important consideration for online quizzes is whether you're going to allow multiple attempts. Um, again, I, I think that this whether, whether you check this box or not really depends on what the purpose of your quiz is. Um, if the purpose is to 
um, you know, create a learning check, then often I will allow multiple attempts. Um, I typically don't allow an infinite number of attempts. I will typically only allow two, for example, so that if they screw up the first time, um, they can go back and fix their mistake and show me that they understand that, um, you know, it was fixable. But obviously, if you have a series of true and false questions, you probably don't want to allow multiple attempts because that is equivalent um, to giving everybody a hundred, um, especially if you let them know what the answers were the first time. So think carefully about what you want to do here. I usually allow multiple attempts. I usually allow two, depending on what it is. If you're doing numerical answers, um, so like if the student has to type in something and it has to be exactly right or right within a certain number, a certain percentage, you may allow an, an infinite number of attempts here because um, those type of questions are hard and it takes a student a while to figure out how to do the problems typically. But again, again, like this is really up to the discretion of the instructor. Think about what you actually want out of these exams. Um, so um, now this is an important checkbox. The next one is whether you want us, the students um, both to see what their responses were. I'm not sure why you wouldn't want them to see what their responses were. Um, so I always leave this check so that they know what their responses were. But then the big question is um, whether you want the students to see the correct answers and when you want them to see those correct answers. Um, so if you're using this for an exam type situation, you, you might not want students to see what the correct answers were, I would suggest. If you're using this um, to, as a learning tool, then I would say that you want them to see the correct answers. Depending on what you're doing, you may want them to only see it after their last attempt. Um, this is what I typically do. And if it's an exam type situation, you may want them to see the correct answers, but only after a certain time. Um, so like you can have it set up so that um, they can see the correct answers, but you know, like only after a certain time and date. So if you want to set up that, you know, date and time down here, you can do that. Um, but you know, it, it depends on how you're using this thing. Um, now, this is kind of interesting. So there's a box down here that says show one question at a time. Um, actually, I've, I've, I don't recommend that people use this checkbox. Um, so in principle, it sounds like it would be a good idea to show one question at a time and then let them know the answer to that or whether they got it right or wrong at that time as a feedback mechanism. But that's actually not how Canvas works. It doesn't show them the answers until after they're done answering every question anyway. So really, this checkbox is really about um, whether you want them to have to lock in their questions or not. Um, so anyway, so it, it'll basically, if you, if you click show one question at a time, obviously what it's going to do is it's going to show one question at a time, and they won't be able to see what they had done for the other questions. Um, I'm not sure why you actually would want to do that. Um, so I typically do not check that button. Um, you can, oh boy, I don't remember what these, requ like requiring an access code, I think basically is, every student gets their own password that they have to, or that they have to type in, I guess, to prevent cheating. I don't think that that actually would prevent cheating. Um, you can filter based on IP addresses, which basically makes sure that it's like no two, two quizzes can't be taken by two different people on the same computer basically. So it's not a bad idea to filter IP addresses, although I don't get the feeling that many students actually share physical computers to take these quizzes. So I don't think there's much of a guarantee that students aren't sitting right next to one another while they do these things. Um, if you want that kind of guarantee, you have to do this a different way. Um, so obviously you can, if you've got different um, sections, you can actually, or different groups of people in your class, you can assign, you can actually assign quizzes to individual people. You can um, assign them to everybody. In my case, I only have one section, so I just assign it to everybody. You can create, you can say when it's due. Um, so that's both a date and a time. Um, you can have an open, so available from is a box that allows you to type in when the quiz opens to the student. Um, And then there's a similar box for until. Um, so 
the due date and the until date are different because the due date is really almost like a recommendation. That's when the student's supposed to do it by. Um, and But it is technically possible for them to do the quiz, get marked as the quiz being turned in late, and then they may still get a grade depending on how you have the rest of your course set up. Um, if you don't want to allow that sort of thing, that's what the until box is for. So like if you set the, on the available until and then you set that date to the same date and time as the due date, then it won't even be possible for students to take quizzes after that date. Um, and, but otherwise, um, a student can actually do, like if you leave these um, blank, for example, a student, oh, I shouldn't set this for the past, I should set it for the future. Um, if I make the due date in the future um, and the student doesn't take it by that date, it is still possible for them to take it at this point. Um, unless I actually lock it out on the same date, then the quiz won't be available anymore and they'll get a zero. Um, so that's not a bad idea, although you can set it up so that late grades are by default equal to zero, uh, zero grade. But anyway, whatever your options are, you just create them um, and you can hit save to save those options. Um, you don't actually have to have clicked save by that point because you may actually want to, we haven't created any questions yet. Um, I'm going to break that into a separate video, but let me just show you that, like, so if we were still in that, so this was the page we were just on before we click save. So this is our example quiz, um, and we've still got all of our settings that we put down here. Um, so once you're ready to create the actual questions, you click on the tab that's next to the detail called questions, and you'll see um, a couple of tabs here. And so at this point, if you create, if you do have question banks that exist, you can go into the find questions um, or the new questions group. But typically what I would do is just literally create a new question by hand each time by creating plus question, by clicking plus question. So I'll break the video here and then I'll come back and show you the details of how you actually create effective questions in Canvas.